Good morning, it's Friday, March 31st, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Age of Offense, Part 2, and our scripture is Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. An age is a measure of humanity's time. If you add a modifier to the noun, it tells you what kind of age it was. The Stone Age, Bronze Age, and Iron Age are three successive periods of humankind's development from the primal to more sophisticated eras of lifestyle. On a more local level, there's the age of a single human being passing time in a microcosm compared to antiquities. First is the primal age spent in the womb, followed by the baby age, toddler, preteen, teen, young adult, middle, and old ages. When you're a preteen, undergoing the beginning stages of hormonal and bodily changes, it seems an eternity before you'll get a driver's license. Time speeds up when you're 75. Every time you turn around, it's a new decade. I have called our current dilemma the age of offense. Every word or deed offends at least somebody. Depending on your tribe, the millennials, Gen X, Z, Boomer, or whatever epoch you occupy, the later the generational label, the more likely you'll spend most of your days angry, stressed out, or ready to kill. The chart in yesterday's devotion of part one depicted a glum indicator of the fast rise of K-12 through mass shootings in America in the last decade. Personally, I can think of no other time when children have been under more stress, pushed to the limit. The sense of hope, joy, and wonder that you want to see in a child's face is rarer now than anxious despair or downright fear. Children are abused by violence. Scripture enjoins parents to train them up. This is an imperative command. Solomon says, you train them. He's sounding the alarm to parents that they must engage with their kids. That means you don't leave it up to the guidance counselor or the preacher or some babysitting device like your phone or the TV or whatever. You spend time with them. Solomon also says to train them in the way. This phrase can refer to a specific path for them to follow, but it more likely refers to helping them find the path where they learn God's way best. Some children are introverted. They learn best by reading and observing. Some are extroverts. They learn best by experiencing. But one factor that's true of all children is that they learn by your example. Your actions will speak so loudly they'll drown out your words. If you send them to church, for instance, they will eventually come to the conclusion that church is for children and they will outgrow it. The busing of children to attend Sunday school in the 1950s through about the 1990s proved that. We now have generations of adults who believe they've outgrown worshiping God. They were trained up by lazy parents that were too busy to bring them to church. And those kids now are not departing from what they have learned. Parenting is not a one-size-fits-all discipline. You must engage, spend time understanding who they are and how they learn. That is a big project. The five minutes before bedtime, reading them a story will not accomplish that. Frankly, it means putting your own time on hold to work with, to study, to talk to, to play with, to instruct, to protect and celebrate, and hold accountable and encourage your children. Now, I can hear your eyes rolling, but please, if Susanna Wesley, who had 19 children, spent quality time with each of her children, you can manage your two, three, or six kids. It depends on your adult decision-making about what's important. For you today, 
The mess of children and young people using guns to solve their insecure relationship with life is a problem that developed over many years of inept parenting. It won't go away in the time it takes to pass a new gun law. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.